A flooded home or business is never easy to deal with. The memories that are lost that you cannot replace. An aquadam can be another tool in your arsenal to protect your home or business from the hurricane storm surge or the king tides. Look us up online at aquadam.net or give aquadam a call at 707-764-2119. We can help. Uh, consider advertising on the Opperman Report. Uh, we have excellent advertising rates for you. Uh, the advertising rates are very affordable. Uh, once your ad goes up and we play the show on the podcast and on the YouTube channel, uh, those ads stay up there forever. And then we play repeats every single night of classic Opperman Report shows. And your new ads will be inserted into those repeats that play every single night. So uh, the, the, the saturation is incredible and the rates are very affordable. Contact me at OppermanReport at gmail.com. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMD Law. Available 24 hours, seven days a week. Just log into KMDLaw.com or you can call toll-free 833-4KMD-Law. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be because the team at KMDLaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Contact KMD Law. EmailRevealer.com. Go to EmailRevealer.com. We handle adoption investigations, infidelity investigations, email tracing, locate or identify somebody from as little as an anonymous email address, summon all your money, back child support. We can find that deadbeat and even assist you in obtaining a judgment and recover that judgment for you. EmailRevealer.com. Digital forensics, computer forensics, cell phone forensics, recover deleted text messages, create a report that you can use in court. Email revealer.com 800-572-9762. Hey guys, if you like the show and you want to show your support, uh, check out the Opperman Report Patreon. We have all the shows that you hear Monday through Friday on AM FM radio, but we cut out the ads. So you can hear that content ad free. The Opperman Report Patreon, you should stop there once a day and check out what's going on over there. That's Opperman Report Patreon. It's the Opperman Report. Join digital forensic investigator and PI Ed Opperman for an in-depth discussion of conspiracy theories, strategy of New World Order resistance, high-profile court cases in the news, and interviews with expert guests and authors on these topics and more. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator, Ed Opperman. <clears throat> you can find me at Opperman Investigations and Digital Forensic Consulting. Uh, either go to my website, emailrevealer.com, or just email me directly at oppermaninvestigations at gmail.com. If you like our show, be sure to check out our Patreon. Uh, we got some new content up on our Patreon. Uh, let's see here. Um, first of all, you get everything that you hear. Monday to Friday on AMFM Radio, uh, with the commercials cut out, with the ads cut out. Uh, we have the author of Hotel Scarface, uh, Robin Farzad. Now, he wrote the book, and, and we met him through uh, uh, Ricardo Morales, who was the son of Ricardo Monkey Morales, the CIA assassin, uh, who was also involved in coke smuggling and coke dealing down in Miami. I think his son was too as well. As a matter of fact... <laughs> I sent the message to the son who I interviewed on the show. And I says, hey, man, I've been trying to get a hold of that smuggler guy you were putting me in touch with. And he's not getting back to me. And he goes, well, which one? <laughs> so the guy's known more than one smuggler. But when we get into this story with uh, uh, Robin Farzad, uh, I called him Ruben by mistake a couple of times. Everything was pissing him off. Um, but uh, it turns out, man, at, at this at the Babylon Cup Club that you see in the movie Scarface, that was a real place. That was a, called a, a Hotel uh, Mutant. And the people who hung out that place, man, it was all the Iran-Contra people, uh, George, uh, yeah, went to Bush, the brother Bush, which was the one who ran for president, uh, uh, Jeb. Jeb Bush was in there with this big mustache. All these characters, man, we talked about hanging out at this club and at this area. Um, so a lot of people uh, who are known to the show and known to the audience uh, were mixed up in this uh, cesspool down there of uh, cocaine smuggling, CIA expats. 
uh, ex uh, CIA, um, ex uh, Cuban exiles. Hotel Scarface, where cocaine cowboys partied and plotted to control Miami. So great stuff. That guy has a, a podcast too. Full disclosure, uh, podcast. And we had Trevor Aronson came back. Great guy. Uh, the FBI manufactured war on terror. Uh, we mostly talked about the recent case up in Wisconsin, uh, but also too how the FBI has infiltrated um, in a COINTELPRO fashion into the Black Lives Matter movement. Now, anybody who's been an activist around this George Floyd period of time, I've seen uh, this rise of the and funding of, of Black Lives Matter. Uh, but also, too, the, the more local, organic groups get no money from the overall Black Lives Matter, get no assistance whatsoever. And there's a lot of infiltration and uh, tampering with, with these organizers and these activists. I had a friend there in Vegas who uh, was followed to her car. They ran her plate, saw she had a warrant, and went to her house a couple of days later and arrested her after, after a protest. So a lot of harassment and targeting of activists. So that's up there at the good old, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, Patreon. We put up some stuff too because if you listen to the show, you know, yeah, if you're listening to the podcast last week, okay, and I came on the air, I, I injured my arm on Thursday, and I was so exhausted by Friday that I just couldn't put together a show. I didn't even know it was Friday. I talked about how bad it was trying to figure out the insurance and the terror, you know, the, the fear of losing your arm, you know. It's just a horrible, horrible situation. And um, so I, I didn't do a show last week. So we took some old shows, some solo shows, and we edited them up and we put them up there for you. Amber Marie is back with, by the Death Duel. That's a great interview. Um, uh, Orlando Orispato, uh, who's uh, the accidental gangster. He was a good guy. Um, the FBI and the musicians. A story about how this guy, this musician, went on Twitter, made a joke, and the FBI tracked him down while he was on tour and insisted that he do an interview with them. Good old Steve Bannon porn in meth house. You can't beat that story. That's a, that's a, from the first-hand people who lived in the house. I've got some really exclusive stuff for you there. Um, and then when you the first time I reported uh, anywhere uh, that there were padlocks on the inside of the house in order to keep somebody locked in, on the windows and doors, and the guest says at the very end, he says, well, I only hope that uh, this investigation uh, will um, uh, lead to other investigations in Palm Beach, which would be Epstein. And this, her daughter went missing in 2005, uh, and uh, she's botched investigation, uh, totally botched. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Um, recorded recently, um, the show is going to be hearing coming up, the target of opportunity about these Navy SEALs. Um, and that's pretty much it. If I'm missing, uh, pretty much it, pretty much it. Okay, so, like I said, um, also, too, you know, you can find the show on Spreaker.com, and there's a chat room, you sign up for free, and uh, you get an email notification when I put up new content, and I play repeats every night. Uh, a repeat I just played this week is a show called The Fixers. Let me see if I can pull that up, so I have the, the full title of the book. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because um, Rudy Giuliani's really, really close friend and attorney, Robert Costello. Uh, well, you know what? Let, let's get into all that. Well, let's do it all at once and tell the whole story at once. Okay, let me find this show first. So I can read it to you when I get to that. Because uh, we're going to get into the whole Stormy Daniels stuff. Okay, I know all these people. <laughs> okay, I know all these people. That's okay. As a matter of fact, sponsor on, on our show was the first uh, Stormy Daniels attorney uh, who arranged the, uh, the payment with uh, Michael Cohen. What happened was, is sometime last week when I was baby in my arm and crying into my Cheerios, uh, Trump announced on Truth Social, I'm going to be arrested on Tuesday. Well, you know, prosecutors, uh, e even Trump's own attorneys were asked about this. And he says, well, you know, we don't have any confirmation of this. But it, it appears from this and other things going on that Trump has sources within this Manhattan DA's office, okay, who's tipping him off. Could be tipping Rudy, could be tipping Carrick, but someone's being tipped off of what's going on ahead of time in the Trump world. So the charges he would be indicted on, because there's a grand jury going on right now, I think today, Tuesday, is the last day. 
uh, because what's going on is I'm taping this show. Um, it's not going to be live on Friday like it normally would be. And it's going to be taped on Tuesday because I got to get out of here. I'm going to be going on a little road trip and do a little camping and a little hiking and just get the hell away from tax returns and medical insurance and all this stuff. Okay, and I'll, I'll just do it with one arm, okay? <laughs> I'll get back, you know? I'll get back, I'll be fine. But I, I need some time away. Mm. I got to get away from this uh, this house. I got to get uh, out in the fresh air and get some exercise and get off the internet and YouTube and Twitter and all this nonsense, you know? And uh, get, get focused back. I have so many big projects I'm working on and uh, just wasting my time. So... Trump announces that he's going to be arrested on Tuesday, which is today. Okay, I know it's Friday you listen to this, but I'm recording this on Tuesday. And Manhattan DA's office says, well, we can't confirm that. Uh, Trump's own attorney says we can't confirm that. Well, he hasn't been arrested today. Uh, but there is protests all over. And as a matter of fact, there was so much concern about violence um, that uh, NYPD was told that all their officers would have to come in in uniform, in full uniform today. Now, it just sounds like, so what, what, don't they wear their uniforms every day? <laughs> you know, I don't get it. But let me tell you something, okay? There are certain uh, commands, right, that when, when they say everyone has to come out in full dress, some of these people are, are out there with rifles, okay? And uh, this has happened before because I do have some friends on NYPD, and, you know, there's a threat. And they got her down there at the, at the subway station standing around with a rifle. <laughs> She's like, well, you know, who am I going to shoot? You know, you still got the same protocols, you know. You can't just, you know, if you, there's really no um, protocols for NYPD that if they're uh, running along, right, and they see a guy about to light a bomb, there's no, uh, pre- well, yeah, you can shoot him. It doesn't, that, that doesn't exist. You know, in fact, my friend used to laugh, the one on NYPD Harbor Aviation, and he says, you know, we would get a call of some suspicious thing. We'd go over there in the boat, and we'd shine the light around, the magic light that makes all bad go away, <laughs> you know? But meanwhile, you know, cause there was doing nothing. They rescued a lot of people, but as far as counterterrorism, counter, counter there's really nothing. Um, so, you listen to Trevor Harris, and he'll say, <laughs> okay. So, um, Trump announces this, and you know, NYPD is all on alert. Uh, but the thing to remember is Trump, Giuliani, Bernie Kerrick. Bernie Kerrick was the former police commissioner. Uh, Rudy Giuliani was a former prosecutor. Uh, Trump's former head of a security, Keith Schiller, had a uh, security company where he employed hundreds, if not thousands, of police officers, NYPD police officers. Uh, when I went to Trump's first rally in Vegas, his whole campaign staff were NYPD cops, either off-duty or whatever. Uh, all a little bit juiced up. Uh, so the kind of support that Trump has in New York with NYPD is, is through the roof. And I don't think I don't know if it's a good idea arming all these cops, <laughs> okay, and, and thinking that somehow they're going to uh, not assist uh, the protesters because they just got caught this weekend escorting the Proud Boys around and letting them through the subway turnstiles for free. So there's a lot of sympathy. A lot of the people who went up to the January 6th up there were, were NYPD or NYP retired. So there's a lot of sympathy amongst that crowd uh, for Trump. So, I, you know, I, and we saw, too, at January 6th, uh, the Capitol Hill police. Trump tweeted at himself, these, these Capitol Hill cops are on our side. And you could see them opening doors, waving people in. There's even a, 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 a bizarre uh, surveillance video. When they're first breaking through that first window and they're climbing through the window, you see the people coming through. And they put their hands up immediately. So they definitely saw some cops there out of, out of range. And, and when they came in, they put their hands up immediately. But then after a while, they stopped putting their hands up. So they were kind of given some kind of a wink or a nod or something. And said, hey, come on in. Do what you want. Okay? Because uh, we no longer live in a democracy in this country. We, we were living in the midst of a big mess. So the, the charges against Trump is the good old Stormy Daniels deal. Okay? And... I know everybody involved in that deal, all right? Um, the attorney, sponsor, client, uh, her agent was my agent at one point. Um, there's a great book that came out called The Fixers, The Bottom Feeders, Crooked Lawyers, Gossip Mongers, and Porn Stars Who Created the 45th President. Now, before this book was written, I was put on the phone with them um, just to talk about Epstein stuff, tip them off about some of that stuff like that. 
And that's how I got that nickname, Scrappy P.I. Because uh, my friend said, hey, I, gotta, I want you to talk to this Scrappy P.I. <laughs> I came out this stuff. So then I had him on the show, and it's a great interview. And if you want to listen to what really went on behind the scenes of the Stormy Daniels deal, this is the place to go. Okay? Now, I was aware of the Stormy Daniels type negotiations way back in 2015, way before it ever hit the news. Okay? I'm plugged into this stuff, man. And the reason why I bring up this book, The Fixers, The Bottom Feeders, Crooked Lawyers, Gossip Mongers, and Porn Stars, who created the 45th president, is because Robert Costello was holding that up when he did a live press conference after testifying to the grand jury yesterday. Now, what was Robert Costello uh, being brought in to testify? Uh, Trump and his friends claimed that Costello had um, derogatory information about the state's main witness, Michael Cohen, and he had all these emails, and basically he laid out the whole Trump defense of the, the Trump defense that they're going to try and use as a defense of this deal. This is, by the way, remember, Michael Cohen has already been convicted for this. He's already served time in prison for this. So it's very unlikely when you have a, a, a co-defendant practically, you know, being testified against a guy who was a co-defendant, you know, who has served time for this crime, uh, that uh, you're not going to get convicted under normal circumstances. So, Costello comes out and says, well, here's what really happened, and we have the emails to prove it. Michael Cohen told me when I was advising him, and, and I, I heard an interview, too, where Cohen blurted out, and Rudy kept trying to get me to hire this guy, Costello. I don't know Costello. I don't want Costello. But it stuck, cause my ears perked up right away, because Costello is up to his neck in the whole Hunter Biden laptop deal, and we're going to get to that, too. Now, Costello claims, and he laid out the whole defense, what their plan of defense for this case is, is that Michael Cohen did this on his own and went and uh, borrowed the money from a home equity loan, a HELOC, and paid off uh, with Stormy Daniels and made the agreement with Keith Davidson. Right? That he just did this on his own, out of the goodness of his heart. Okay, But the only problem with that is is an audio tape exists of Cohen talking to Trump about this money and raising the money. Now, also, too, why did he use a HELOC? Why did he take out a second mortgage, an equity line against his home? Well, if you listen to the shows we've done with Janet Phelan, researching your judge, that's how it's done. That's how they pay off these judges. That's how bribes are paid off. The person will take out a mortgage, and then someone else comes and pays back the mortgage. Okay? which is what happened here, but, but uh, kind of screwed Cohen because um, uh, Cohen paid Stormy Daniels and then Trump paid him back and called it legal fees, not uh, a loan, you know, like it really was. So the problem is now that's a misdemeanor and it's only going to be a felony if it's uh, in, co in conjunction with another felony, with another crime. So there could be campaign finance uh, uh, abuse. Who knows what it could be? Um, a lot of people look at this Michael Cohen and, and treat him now like he's some kind of hero. You know, Michael Cohen is the one who said that a wife can't get raped, okay, when Trump was being accused of, of raping Ivana, Ivana. He said, well, I mean, you know, you can't rape your wife. Kind of a crazy misogynistic statement to be making. Um, and he's somehow given a pass on that. Now, one of the other... One of my other problems with Michael Cohen, okay, is that uh, one of his other deals for Trump was hushing up the whole Jerry Falwell Jr. pool boy story. Right? When the pool boy had these pitches, uh, Jerry Falwell Jr. went to Michael Cohen to shut down that, uh, that deal. And then, then what do you call it? Uh, Jerry Falwell Jr. gave his endorsement, because he runs this big church, and he used to go to college and stuff, like in Christian college, gave his endorsement to Trump. Okay, Clearly, some type of quid pro quo. There's even pictures of Trump shaking hands with the poor boy. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, you can't beat this stuff. You can't beat this stuff. Now, it's been told to me, okay, and not by any name that I've mentioned so far here today, 
uh, that Jerry Falwell Jr. still pays, still has Michael Cohen on the payroll. And the reason why he's paying Michael Cohen is to so that Cohen does not talk about Trump and Epstein and that Cohen does not talk about um, Trump's abortions. Okay, that's the word I got from, from a source that I trust and I believe. Okay, so there's that. So we have Costello laying out the whole defense. It's not going to hold the water. Um, now, people, a lot of people are saying, well, we weren't paying attention. He says, well, Ed, Stormy Daniels lost that lawsuit. They're, so how can you say now that they're going to arrest Mr. Trump and convict him and put him in prison uh, when she lost the lawsuit? It was proven that she lied. That No, the, what was proven, she did lose the lawsuit. So she got mixed up with that Avenatti character. Um, he stole money from her. I think he stole 300000 from her from her book proceeds. And the whole idea of going back for more money was malpractice, okay? Um, and the whole idea of suing Keith was malpractice, too, as well, in my opinion. Now, she violated the nondisclosure agreement. That's why she had to pay back the 130 And then she got ripped off by Avenatti for 300000 Avenatti's in prison today, okay, for those uh, little uh, discrepancies. And all of it, he had this big, giant extortion plot uh, against the NBA, okay? That, uh, you know, by the way, you know, there was another big-named attorney who was partnered with him in that deal that just skated out of this thing without even a, a hiccup. Avenatti's on the, on the news uh, being involved in his NBA scam and his other attorney. No one mentions his name. No one talks about him or anything. It's like it never happened. It never happened. So, the great, uh, once again, you, you want to hear the inside story about this, get that book, The Fixers. And it just so happens, man, when, as I was playing the show, uh, repeating it yesterday, uh, who was Robert Costello was in front in the news conference holding up that book. So, you know, I've had the, been talking about that book for what, four years now? I uh, had the uh, authors on the show. I had some private conversations with them off the air as a private investigator. So as a scrappy private investigator, by the way. So there's that. That's the, the whole rundown of what's going on this week with Mr. Trump's indictment and uh, the whole thing with uh, Stormy Daniels. Now, by the way, he has another potential indictment coming up in Georgia, and he just tried to do a preemptive motion saying, hey, don't indict me. You know, this is con unconstitutional. Good luck with that, my friend. We get, they got a tape recording on this thing saying, all I need is 10,000 votes. Can you get them for me? You know, that's kind of another one, open and shut kind of cases. And by the way, yeah, and I told you, you know, that you can, Cohen can lose all his credibility in the world. And you think one way they'd want to go after his credibility is talking about this little pain with, with the, uh, uh, Jerry Falwell Jr., but they can't talk about that, right, because that makes Trump look bad. Uh, but that would be a great way to destroy his credibility if they really wanted to. Oh, yeah. Now, we had some news this week about the, some Jeffrey Epstein lawsuits, right, that were, just went before an appellate court. Um, there's three plaintiffs, and they're trying to sue J.P. Morgan Chase uh, and Deutsche Bank. Now, the theory of this lawsuit... Um, is that uh, these financial institutions were aware that Epstein was convicted of child molestation, although he was, wasn't really. He was con he was convicted of uh, uh, sex with a prostitute. You know, um, was this what he actually got convicted of? Even with the original charge, he could have got forty years. There were so many victims, but he got that incredible sweetheart deal. Uh, by Jim Acosta, who was later appointed by Trump to be the Commerce Secretary. <sighs> so, by the way, J.P. Morgan Chase, you know, you know who they are? They run the food stamp, EBT cards. Okay, that's the banking institution that runs EBT cards. Um, and they must make, we, we don't even know how much money they, they siphon off of EBT cards, because every state's different. So there's no one way where you can Google and find out how much they're making off the EBT, you know, food stamp cards, you know. Now, why we need them to do it, I have no idea. Some kind of sweetheart deal there. Now, excuse me. Now, 
Now, the plaintiffs, there's three plaintiffs in this, right? Two of them are uh, uh, one of the girls and an anonymous plaintiff who filed on behalf of all similar situated, of all the victims. Um, and the third one is the U.S. Virgin Islands. Now, this is one of the most misunderstood, mis- not misunderstood, it's never really misunderstood, it's BS, you know? Over the years, I've seen all these uh, Epstein litigations, and they put it in the press like, oh, no, they won again. Oh, there's a settlement now. The truth will never come out. This was covered up. This was paid off. And I was trying to explain to people that, that that's what the plaintiffs in these cases are looking for. They're looking for a settlement. Nobody wants to go to trial. It's not all about uh, people sitting at home on the Internet wanting to see salacious material. It's, it's so fascinating to them. Another thing, you, so there would be successful cases that would be portrayed as losses, okay? Uh, there was a lawsuit with Dershowitz that was settled and that was tried to appear in the press that Dershowitz was victorious. When we found out later on that he paid a settlement, uh, he paid to get that settlement. Uh, people will say over and over, how come we can't see the client's list? Why can't we see the names of the people who paid Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell to have sex with children? And that's because there's no evidence of that. There's no evidence of clients that paid them for that that benefit. All of these people who were mixed up with Epstein, the money was going in the other direction. He was making big donations to places like Harvard and MIT and donations to these politicians and people. You know, that, and that's what... That's what they say. You know, they, they also, why was me, what happened? Because I was getting money from them. You know, I, I wasn't doing anything with these kids. But people, you know, uh, Hoffenberg used to say it all the time. Stephen Hoffenberg, who was Jeffrey Epstein's mentor and hired him at uh, Tower Financial. Um, Rudy Giuliani was the corporate counsel at that company. And then all the money was stolen, and Je- uh, Hoffenberg was left holding the bag. Everyone else got away. He used to say all the time, this case is so complicated that the average person can't understand it. And that's so true. Uh, and, and one reason why is because the media misportrays these things. And then you have these YouTubers and these TikTokers who like to make them reels. They like to make these little catchy phrases. How come no one at the client list got arrested? Huh? You know, and, and it just gets, goes viral. Uh, but it's really stupidity. Now, one of the other issues, see, because one of the plaintiffs in this case is the U.S. Virgin Islands, and there's a whole big thing you hear on the Internet, and then right after Biden went down to visit the Virgin Islands during Christmas, they fired the attorney general, and the case was dropped because they fired her. Biden silenced it. No, this it was just ruled <laughs> just yesterday that the Virgin Islands case can continue. And yes, Denise George was fired, okay? There's some kind of beef with her and the governor down there. I think his name is Brian. Uh, But the thing is, this is just like laziness, you know? This is just laziness. Because the assistant attorney general, uh, Carol Jacobs, her name is on that paperwork too. Okay, she she signed that same complaint that Denise George did, and she's still in office. In fact, she's now the the, the acting attorney general of the Virgin Islands. That no, was not a hiccup in that in that complaint in that lawsuit. Not a hiccup. Okay, fine. One of the prosecutors got fired, but the case is proceeding. Okay, and you see, they're still fighting it. They just won yesterday in court, and Joe Biden went down there every Christmas up until COVID, okay? Every stick the Biden family went to the Virgin Islands every Christmas. Now, that's not saying, you know, that I like the Bidens, okay? Maybe they were down there to visit Epstein, okay? That's very possible, okay? Because he was very close to every... Why wouldn't they, right? He was a big donor, I'm sure. I'm sure there was a lot of contact. Had a lot of the same interests as a Hunter, right? <laughs> okay? A lot of the same interests as, as uh, Joe Biden, okay? Sleepy Joe. Creepy Joe. Okay? So, very well could be, but I don't... There's no evidence that he went down there and shut down that investigation. As a matter of fact, I did a whole show about it, and the timing doesn't even work. Um, so there's that. So that's good news, by the way. It's good news that, that we won that case in Manhattan. Uh, the three plaintiffs, the, the two 
representing victims. And the Virgin Islands, the case in the Virgin Islands was just moved forward. We can't, when sometimes something goes good, okay, and we win a little victory, we can't keep going back and saying all the time, they cover everything up and they kill everybody who talks and they, because it's not, it's just not how it works. It's just not how it works. You know, there, there are many, many victories and all this, and many of these plaintiffs are satisfied with, with what they're getting. And just because you're not, because you're sitting home and watching it on TV or worse, uh, reading about it on TikTok or some nonsense. Um, there was this horrible story about Amanda Bynes from uh, that, that show, Amanda, I think it was, or iCarly it might have been. Amanda, please. And uh, that was like one of the first tween shows. You know, my daughter started watching when she was like four or five years old and, and fell in love with it. And um, her little friends were all into Amanda. And one of her friends looked so much like that girl. Because Amanda used to play two parts, you know. And she used to play this girl. We would go, Amanda, please. I'm a fan of Amanda. I want to be Amanda. You know, and that's always always tease her about that because she looked like her. Um, Disney star who's had a very troubled life. A very, very troubled life. As a matter of fact, she was just found walking naked uh, in the street and borrowed someone's phone and uh, asked them to call uh, 911 for it. She had herself uh, involuntarily committed. So, just like Isaac Cappy, too. Same thing, you know. I don't know if uh, people know who Isaac Cappy was, uh, but he also had himself involuntarily committed. Not voluntarily committed. Uh, before he went public with his periscope and made all these accusations about a list of people that he had all this information about. We never saw any facts or anything. Uh, But that's what he did. Now, Amanda Bynes, troubled young lady, uh, she went to somebody's house one time and started a fire in their driveway of things, you know, documents and stuff. She some issues with some people around her, you know, but I've seen a lot with these um, Hollywood, these high-profile celebrity people types and they do have uh hangers honors and leeches and people who uh, psychologically abuse them and manipulate them i think it's more common than not you know um for people especially when they're stuck into a weakened state for these people to le- latch leech onto them and take advantage of them manipulate them you see that a lot you be very careful uh who you allow into your life because you're the wrong person you got a big problem um a lot of people try and make this okay right away when I, I posted the article. Oh, she's MK Ultra, you know. MK Ultra was a real program, but not every instance. Just because the person's on TV is MK Ultra. I did a whole show about this, about an alternative theory about how all these young Disney stars, everyone thinks they're MK Ultra survivors, like mind control, brainwash survivors, and I have my own reasons uh, to not believe. That's entirely true. Um, I worked on a, a case one time of a very one of these celebrities. Everybody points to clearly has mental illness, um, and the, they went missing, and I was involved in locating them. And the circumstances around that trip was involved uh, meth. <laughs> okay, you know, uh, it was not just a little bit either. You know, this is a a wild weekend. Know, lost weekend. Um, with this whole Nickelodeon, Amanda Bynes, Dan Schneider, uh, I w- was involved. I've interviewed some people, not on the radio, for, for putting trying to put together a litigation against Nickelodeon and some other producers and stuff down there. Now, the whole Dan Schneider thing, yeah, the guy's up to his neck, and, and then several others too as well. Um, the main evidence that I can find against Nickelodeon was that they they were systemically alienating these teen actors from their parents. Okay, there's no doubt in my mind about that. There's also no doubt in my mind, because I've heard from several different sources, that the kids were allowed to hang out in the school trailer without any adult supervision. And there was sex going on in there. Okay, and sometimes it was... uh, which you might consider coercive sex or group sex or um, issues of power dynamics going on there amongst all teenagers and students. 
there were no adults in the room. Uh, that's my understanding with, with all that situation. So uh, Nickelodeon, yeah, they have a lot to uh, um, uh, answer for, you know, as far as uh, all the situations that, that they got into. Quick uh, Andrew Tate update. Um, if you don't know who Andrew Tate is, is this guy. Um, he, he's arrested in Romania. He's a former MMA fighter. He was on Celebrity Big Brother, although I think the one in England. And uh, has this point of view, very misogynistic. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of stuff, man. Uh, huge YouTube internet sensation, right? Hundreds of millions of hits, millions of followers. So he gets arrested in Romania uh, for human trafficking and uh, sex trafficking and rape. Now, he, he pretty much admits to the sex trafficking as, as it, it violates the law in Romania. Uh, Romania has this law called the lover boy scam, where if you take these young ladies and you lure them into your life, and then with the promise of marriage and love, and then you wind up exploiting them, that's a crime over there. Now, he pretty much, he, he admitted this, <laughs> he admitted to the whole plan, word for word, uh, on his website, that he he's described, he's done it on video, too, so uh, how do you think, has so many fans who think there's no evidence, there's no, uh, there's no proof, who are the victims, there are no victims, you know, I have all the facts all confused, but since there's so many uploads of these reels, these um, propaganda reels, and videos constantly that the truth is hard to understand. Well, they were just denied bail again. They just had a bail hearing, and they were denied again. And there's a lot of reasons for this. One is um, uh, they, they tried to come up with these phonied up uh, text transcripts uh, that were edited, you know, and they released that in the press. Another thing is they've been making three-way calls out of prison. Like they'll call one person they're allowed to call, and then that person will start calling other people so they can have a three-way call. All this is a uh, – and plus they're bragging about uh, trying to bribe politicians. Uh, he's bragged in the past about having multiple passports. So a very uh, rare possibility that they're getting out of jail, at least for another 30 days. There can't be another hearing, bail hearing for 30 days. Uh, so And it could – one of these, uh, after they, they run out of appeals after a while, and then they'll be held there until a trial, which could be a couple of years uh, before they even get to trial. Uh, so anyway, that's Andrew Tate. Uh, if you want to Google him and look him up. Now, I was sent this video, and this is one of the wackiest. It's a YouTube video. No, normally, I hate people who send me YouTube videos and I complain about it. This is on a, a channel called Luca, L-U-C-A, and the title is Predator Arrested for DUI after wanting to smoke crystal meth with 13-year-old. Now, mind-blowing, this video, okay? Um, if you don't know, I've done several shows about this topic, these internet um, online predator investigators who try to, uh, they create fake profile accounts, and they try to allure adults. They, they pretend to be decoyed, they pretend to be children underage, and the adults contact them and, and try to offer them sex, you know, let's get together, you know, send me nude photos, that kind of stuff. They find out where the person lives and they go confront them with video cameras and they put the videos up on YouTube. And they're very, very popular. Now, YouTube's uh, fighting back and taking a lot of these channels down uh, because YouTube is just a horrible, evil company. Oops. Let me fix that. So, I've had a couple of these people on the show. I had Tommy from Colorado, Ped Patrol. Now, Ped, yeah, Ped Patrol. Um, nice guy. I think he's very sincere in what he's doing. He's had some controversy since then because some paperwork on some nonprofit paperwork is, isn't up to snuff. Um, but it doesn't seem like he was doing this for any kind of a, a evil gain or anything like that. I think he's a sincere guy um, out there trying to help people. And then but what happens? You get kicked in the butt, right? Uh, so, not that I'm any stranger to that. So I had him on the show, and I gave him some advice on how to present his case to the police and the prosecutors by putting together a report. And he he took my advice, man. He never came back and thanked me, but he took my advice. And I would see in his future videos, he had all the on a binder. He had his report all put together. Here it is, officers. You know, and he was getting some success there. Now, some of the, uh, these other guys in other states that have been targeted 
uh, by prosecutors and police, I found out it's because uh, one of the people who they exposed and did their YouTube video of was a friend of the local prosecutor, okay? And that's why that guy has so much hardship in his life. Now, I went to many of these people who run these channels. Most of them are off YouTube now, and they're on uh, Rumble and these other forms, these other video streaming platforms. And I reached out to them. One guy had a video where a pastor of a church was caught trying to meet up with a kid. And after the video aired, um, the catcher guy, I contacted him. I says, and he says, there's other victims out there that are from this church that are contacting. So I says, dude, you know, if you got other victims, we got a lawsuit here. Put me in touch with these victims. Well, one of the other, <laughs> one of the main most popular uh, predator catchers of all, okay, was a guy I reached out to him. And I says, dude, I'll help you make your uh, reports. I'll teach you how to do it. Also, too, you're a very good interrogator. Get the book. Read. Read. Techniques of interrogation. Okay, this is the Bible on how to interrogate, how to question people. You will pick up all kinds of tricks and, and little uh, uh, manipulative uh, methods to interview people and get confessions. So he did go. I don't think he bought the book, but I don't. I know he researched. I could tell right away his, his interviewing techniques went through the roof. Okay, ten times better. But he's a very right wing guy. <laughs> he's a very right wing guy. And when I asked him, hey, do you want to be interviewed? I guess he checked me out. He didn't like my credentials or whatever. Oh, this guy doesn't like Trump. So he must be George Soros. <laughs> George Soros must be. So he told the other guy with the, with, the, with the church, you know, all those victims at the church, he says, no, nah, I don't work with that guy. He's, he's a liberal. You know, he's a, he's a George Soros-funded uh, 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 guy. I tell you, man, it's just so crazy. People are just so nuts. But this one here that's in this video, predator arrested for DUI after wanting to smoke crystal meth with 13-year-old, is a very thin Asian man who's uh, walking around like a CVS pharmacy, and uh, the guy approaches him, right? And he says, you know, what are you doing? Well, I'm here to get uh, laxatives. <laughs> I'm here to get my fiber pill so I can uh, go to the bathroom. And he's so obviously tweaking all over the place in this video. So the guy starts chasing him around the store, screaming, this guy's a pedophile. He wants to meet a 13-year-old kid. And look, I have a special. The whole, the whole store's in an uproar. You know, some uh, salespeople are trying to kick him out. You know, <laughs> Some people are trying to defend him. You know, it's just chaos, right? So this really creepy guy who's tweaking out all over the place, who thought he was talking to a 13-year-old kid and wanted to smoke meth, crystal meth, with a 13-year-old kid, Makes it out to the parking lot to his car. Everyone's screaming, call the police, call the police. He gets into his, this is a wild video. He gets into his car and he p floors it in reverse and crashes up onto one of those median mounds that has a big pole on it and <laughs> crashes into that. The car almost flips over. It's a huge crash. Then he starts hitting other cars. He's driving around in circles back. And the guy's just driving like a complete lunatic. So, you can imagine by now, hundreds of people calling the cops. So like 10 cops show up. But I think the only thing he got arrested for was DUI. <laughs> I'm not trying to smoke meth with a kid. But and a part of the reason is, because look, these guys got to get their act together. If they really want to do this, if you really want to get somebody arrested, okay, if you want to take somebody's liberty and put them in handcuffs and put them in a cage, put them before a judge, and then put them in a cell for a long time. You can't just willy-nilly just, just point to the cops and say, Hey, nobody, this is what he said. Oh, blah, 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 blah. You know, that's not going to get you anywhere. You, you, on such and such a date, I created this account on, on uh, Grinder. Okay, the name is a, a, was a Poor Boy 500. <laughs> okay, whatever. Okay, I was contacted at such and such a time and such and such a date by this other screen name. We then exchanged phone numbers. Here is his phone number. We then agreed to meet at this location at on such and such a date, such and such a time. I told him I was 13, such and such a date, such and such a time. I told him again I was 13. Here's a screenshot of that in the report. This is how you do it, okay? A report with exhibits. 
that you can then just when the cops show up, you hand it over to them, and then they're not saying, "Okay, um, you want to write down what happened here? Here, <laughs> we'll, we'll do a report here in the, in the field. You know, do you have time for that? Do you want to come back to the station, write out that hand, write out a report? Why not have the damn thing ready? Okay, and another thing too, flips me about these these uh, YouTubers is they they've been calling the police for now oh a couple of years. Okay, they've been calling nine one one. For the police to respond to their location for a couple of years and they still aren't prepared ahead of time to know the address where they are if you're going to meet somebody at their house or at a cbs or whatever you don't have that location handy in your hand in your report of where you are so when you call the police and say can you respond here now by the way they just do that too for the video because you really don't need police to respond you can just bring it down to the police station and drop it over to the da's office here if it's a notarized complaint to have it even a complaint and you've cited the laws that are broken, those local laws. You don't need a cop to investigate that and put a stamp on it. You just go straight to the DA's office. they got their own investigators. Right? So you don't need these these long conversations out in the street. Oh, you know, you ever watch uh, um, Catch a Predator? Well, we do the same thing. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, you don't need to do all of that. And, and come on, give me a break. When you've been doing this for two, three years and you don't have that set up yet, you don't have your ID ready. You, you don't have your act together so much that when the police show up, you say to them, Hi, my name is Ed Opperman. This guy's with me. This guy's with His name is Jesus. His name is Charlie. These two fellows are with me. And we came here to confront this other fellow. This is him. So at least the cop knows what the two sides are, how to separate people. This is such basic, basic, basic stuff. I'm trying to teach these kids something. And uh, they don't care. You know, it's, it's all big fun and games. Okay, well, here it is, right in the middle of uh, me taping this uh, this live Friday night solo show for you. It's come out. The Trump indictment will come out tomorrow, surrender next week, okay? Uh, so, and then it talks about the NYPD, all hands on deck, Capitol Police calling more manpower. This calls for violence online. So, we, we got a lot of stuff here. Now, finally, we have it. Here comes the indictment and then the, and the, the arrest. Uh, not arrest? of a former sitting U.S. president who's actually declared um, as a candidate uh, to be president once again. Now, uh, you know, all the, you know, when this word came out, when Trump came out, by the way, how does he know in advance he's, he's being indicted? And, and, and Costello, too, was saying, they're bringing him back Cohen, they're bringing him back on Thursday. How does he know? And when even Cohen doesn't know he's being brought back. They definitely have tipsters there in the... Uh, the prosecutor's office. Oh, boy. And so DeSantis, who's running against Trump, uh, came out with a statement after Trump made this. Uh, and it was a, kind of a backhanded, you know, when he says the whole thing, ah, you know, it's politically motivated. Uh, but come on, the guy was. <laughs> Shit up with a porn star, you know, and paying a rough hush money, you know. Like so there's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, but hey, there we have it, man. History, historic. The, the first, and who predicted this, by the way? You know, this, I, let me see if I can find that prediction. I predict this th during the primary. Um, I, 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 let's see. I predicted during the primary that, uh, and it, what do I want to find here? Uh, that, that, that Trump would get arrested. He would never survive the scrutiny of his tax returns, of pushing, creeping right up to the line and, and stepping over it, uh, all of his uh, not paying his bills, his unethical behavior, all the, the, the allegations of rape and sexual battery. He would never survive not this gambit. He would never survive this scrutiny. And once again, I hate to say, what's it going to write? <laughs> okay. You know, what's it going to write? I knew about these, uh, these deals going back in 2015. You know, so I don't know, man. So I'm feeling a lot better than I was on Thursday and Friday, but my arm is still really, really messed up. Okay. So I need to take a break and uh, take some time off the internet, take some time uh, out in nature, okay, with some fresh air, without the TV on, without the videos, you know, without all this stuff, um, and just, just get out. And I'll leave my phone behind too. I'm not even gonna bring my phone. Uh, I'm not bringing my phone even on th the trip. Forget you know camping. You know I just need to get away from people. Uh, so I know people love to text me and message me and tell me what to do and explain things to me. Uh, so you're just gonna have to go like five days without doing it. <laughs> okay, you're gonna have to find somebody else. 
I had to help out with all your wisdom and knowledge and explain things to let's see what's going on here so uh, before I go once again be sure and check out that interview I did about the whole Stormy Daniels deal uh, just played a repeat this week it's called you can find it on Spreaker uh, the fixers the bottom feeders crooked lawyers gossip mongers and porn stars who created the 45th president it's kind of a long title uh, but the guys who I interviewed like New York Times and, and uh, Wall Street Journal reporters very legit guys um, I don't think anybody who was in the book, who's mentioned in the book, has a complaint about the, their reporting. And definitely, definitely, definitely knew and understood what was going on here. What is this? Uh, okay. Um, so we have all of that. Also, ch uh, check out a show called Scrappy P.I., where I also discuss um, my knowledge, my behind-the-scenes knowledge of that whole case. Uh, the whole Stormy Daniels case that turns out is going to be the case that gets the first president of the United States arrested ever. And once again, who's who's five degrees away? <laughs> who's four degrees away from it? Good old Eddie Opperman. Yeah, but keep but keep kicking me around, man. See, what, what, what are you guys going to do when I'm gone? Okay, that's what I want to know. Who's who going to have to copy? <laughs> who are you going to have to complain about? Who are you going to have to steal from? Uh, who are you going to have to if we're gonna, to actually... Uh, Give you your big break there, you know, uh, that someone could actually hear it. And, and oh no, but what is going on here? Everything's being bombarded here. All right, guys. So thank you so much. Uh, like I said, I'm taking a week off, uh, so you might be hearing some repeats. Um, uh, we're doing the best we can. Um, and uh, when I get back, uh, we got a lot of big stuff in plan for you. Good night.